Carlsbad example, they are spending twice as much for seawater desalination as they do on imported water. Now they were looking at it and saying, well, at some point in the future, the cost will be comparable. Um, and I think some folks pointed to the fact that, well, when that's the case, then that's probably when you should build it. Today, desalinated water in Carlsbad costs approximately twice as much as imported water, but you're comparing apples and oranges because that imported water is coming from systems that were built a half a century ago where all the capital investment has been paid off. Standing down for five or 10 years, hoping there's some major breakthrough in the technology is not going to materially reduce the cost of building infrastructure. That's not unique to desal and water. That's true of all public infrastructure. We, we have a huge deficit. We need to start building not just water, but transportation and housing now, not five or 10 years from now. The Carlsbad plant is operated as a public-private partnership. With the Carlsbad seawater desalination plant and the proposed Huntington Beach seawater desalination plant, we're proposing a public-private partnership where the plant is 100% privately financed. And then we enter into a long-term fixed price water purchase agreement with a public water agency. And essentially we're recovering our investment over time through the sale of water. There's an infrastructure deficit in the United States. There's certainly an infrastructure deficit in California, and you can't expect local, state, and federal government to pay for all of it. The private sector is gonna to have to invest private dollars. And I think there's a huge opportunity in water in a way that both uh, protects the ratepayers and also allows for the investment of private capital. Beyond the environmental costs of producing the energy needed to power these plants, another concern arises because they're not just outputting clean, desalinated water. They're also producing huge amounts of hyper-salty water, called brine, as a byproduct. Seawater desalination plants that use reverse osmosis typically operate at a 50% efficiency in that if you take in two gallons of seawater, you're going to produce one gallon of fresh water and one gallon of hypersaline brine. It's a fixed volume of salt that I'm trying to remove. So whether I put it in half a gallon of 